when you're drawing older people, it can be quite challenging to recreate those skin textures and make it look realistic. So I'm going to explain the techniques that I use and my own thought process behind how I create my pastel portraits of elderly people so that you can use these tips in your own drawings and make them look even more realistic. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I create drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow so that you can create realistic and professional artwork even if you're just starting out. This may sound really obvious but there is a big difference between young and old people's skin texture. Aside from the finer lines and wrinkles that older people tend to have, they also have more blemishes like moles, sunspots and freckles. They also have a lot more colour shifts in the skin, so you can see some of the blue of the veins or some of the areas of the skin are more yellow or purple or grey or red. And the skin is usually a lot more textured than young people's skin. So I'll start with some of the tips for drawing wrinkles realistically. The first thing is to not just draw a dark line where the wrinkle is. Make sure that you're using shading to help create that rounded form. A harsh line doesn't really look natural, it really needs to fade into the skin around it. So I only use a dark colour where there actually is a dark shadow, which is not on every wrinkle. Some wrinkles are actually deeper than others, which creates that darker looking shadow, whereas other wrinkles are a little bit shallower or it's a finer line, which will be a lighter colour. Some wrinkles actually have a point where it's super dark in the middle of the crease or at some point throughout the crease, but then it gets lighter towards the edges of the wrinkle. So you don't have to use the same value or darkness for the entire wrinkle. The color of the actual crease in the wrinkles aren't the same all the way over the skin either. Sometimes I start out with the same color over the entire portrait just to mark in where the wrinkles go, but throughout the process, I'll come over the top with other colors to match that area on my reference photo. For example, the wrinkles in the shadow part of the forehead are a bit more green-brown, whereas the prominent wrinkle under the eye, for example, has more of a darker red or sort of purple colour. And it's only a really subtle difference, but you really want to take notice of those kinds of things to make it look even more realistic. The next thing is to make sure that you're shading the edges of the crease so it's not just a line on the face. So you want to shade from the wrinkle into the skin colour around it. You need to make sure that you're adding highlights and shadows for each wrinkle and not just a line and then a skin color. Usually one side of the wrinkle has sort of a highlight because that's where the light is hitting. And then the other side is usually a darker color that fades gradually into the skin. And I'll say this a lot throughout the tutorial, but make sure that you pay attention to the reference photo because some wrinkles have a harsher line on one side and then fade into the skin a lot more gradually on the other. And that might not be the case for every single wrinkle. So you have to look at each wrinkle on your reference photo and try and see if the edges look a bit more harsh or if it fades gradually into the skin. And also don't just guess what the wrinkles look like and where they're positioned. Look at each wrinkle on your reference photo and really pay attention to how big they are, how deep they are, what shape it is and what direction it's going. If you just draw squiggly lines where you think the wrinkles should go, it won't really look realistic. You need to look at your reference and apply the wrinkles the same way so that the structure of the face with the bones and the muscles underneath will look accurate. Skin obviously sits on top of bones and muscles. So if you draw the wrinkles in the wrong direction or the wrong shape, or you're just guessing in general, it doesn't really give that realistic effect. And it can actually change the structure of the facial features and the shape of the face itself. Before I talk about my tips for getting realistic skin texture and colour, if you want to follow along with a full length real time version of this tutorial where I talk you through every step of the process, then I have that available for you over on my Patreon channel where you can join over 250 students who are already improving their drawing and painting skills. From as little as $4 per month, you will have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, colored pencil, charcoal, watercolor, and more. There are tutorials available for a range of subjects like wildlife, birds, landscapes, still life, flowers, and portraits. If you would like to view the entire Patreon tutorial library before joining us, I'll also leave that link in the description for you as well. 
Not only are my tutorials full length, real time and fully narrated with clear instructions and explanations, but you will also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline and a list of suppliers including the exact colour names I'm using, so you really can relax and follow along every step of the way. Every month I upload brand new tutorials to the Patreon library, so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice or share your artwork and you can talk to other members in the Patreon community. And the best part is that there are no lock-in contracts, so you can upgrade or downgrade to a different tier level, or you can cancel your pledge at any time if Patreon isn't right for you. So why not give it a go? The color that you see in elderly people's skin usually shifts quite a lot throughout the face. Often there's more purple or red around the eye area, more blues and purples towards the temples, and the nose is usually a bit more red. And it's obviously going to be different for each reference photo that you're working from, but you really want to pay attention to the color shifts and not just use the same mid-tone highlight and shadow colors over the entire face. And a good way to find out what those colors are in your reference photo is to actually make a color swatch from your drawing using a program like Paint or Photoshop or an online editor. And you can just use the eyedropper tool to select different areas of the skin in your reference and then you can make a swatch of that color on the side. And that way you can actually see what colors are in each section of your reference photo. And you'll notice that there are quite a lot of different colors throughout the face itself. Also paying attention to little blemishes like the moles and the freckles is important. And it's the same thing with those moles and freckles. They're not all gonna be the same color over the entire drawing. Some might be a bit more red toned, whereas some might be a bit more brown or yellow. So you just want to look at each section separately and pay attention to those things. And all that being said about the colors, you don't actually have to have your color choices super accurate. My colors are always different from the reference photo, but I still have that general gist of the different color shifts, like the reds and purples and yellows are all in the right spot, but it may be a slightly different red or yellow or purple to what I see in the reference photo. So if you're choosing a red, for example, you just want to make sure that it's not too dark or too light in comparison to the red that you're seeing on your reference photo. It doesn't matter too much which red you choose as long as your values are right. So making sure that your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough is more important than choosing the perfect color. Something that I like to do to check if my values are right throughout the process is to take a photo of my artwork and then compare it side by side to my reference photo. It makes it even easier to check to see if your shadows and highlights are accurate if you turn the photo and the reference photo to black and white. And then you can clearly see if your darks are dark enough and your lights are light enough and then you can adjust it on your own drawing from there. Another thing to note is that you don't need to have every detail there to make it look realistic. The artwork can actually look realistic from a normal viewing distance or from a few steps back without having tiny little details and having to labor over your artwork for many hours on end. If you have your values and proportions right, it will look realistic without having to add those tiny details. For my pieces personally, I tend to let a lot of the pencil strokes show through, especially on elderly people, because if you over blend your pastel, it can look a little bit too smooth, almost like a child's skin or a young person's skin and it actually looks more realistic if you keep some of that texture of your pastel pencil there. And I talk about this quite a lot, but when you look closely at those beautiful realistic paintings that you see in art galleries and museums, you can really only see brush strokes and colors. There's usually not a lot of small details, but when you step back, it looks realistic and your eyes tend to just fill in the gaps with detail that isn't actually there. And you can create that same effect with your pastel artwork as well, or any medium that you're working in. And obviously it's up to you how much detail you want to include and how much time you want to spend on your piece. But honestly, this portrait took me less than five hours to draw. And I quite like the fact that you can see pencil strokes and my artistic style when you look closely. But when you look at it from a little bit further away, it, it looks like there's a lot more detail than is actually there. When you're drawing eyebrows on elderly people, they're usually a bit thinner and a bit more sparse. So you really have to make sure that you have your layer of skin down first and then draw the hairs on top. 
And if you're drawing elderly men, the hairs tend to be a lot longer and curlier as well. So pay attention to how the hairs on the eyebrow actually are in your reference photo. I haven't talked much about drawing eyes in this portrait because I actually already have an in-depth tutorial in the top left of the screen where I go through the do's and don'ts of drawing an eye in pastel. So click on that and I'll see you over there.